The next category is for individual achievement. And the winner of that is Mike Lowe, who is at WITI, a Fox affiliate in Milwaukee. Uh, the judges uh, noted that he did an illuminating investigation of the role that big money plays in Wisconsin politics and commented on his hard-hitting, useful, well-produced, clear-cut journalism. Let's see some of it. Fox 6 News examined how special interest groups across the political spectrum avoided disclosing their donations during the 2012 recall. Through open records requests, Fox 6 News obtained the IRS tax documents for the Wisconsin Club for Growth, the group at the center of the investigation into Scott Walker. What we found is a clear picture of how it funneled money to other organizations while keeping the public in the dark. The club started the election cycle with more than $12 million. It's nearly impossible to tell where that money came from. But of that $12 million, 4,620,000 dollars was donated to another group called Citizens for a Stronger America. That donation made up the group's entire budget, except for a single $25 donation. Citizens for a Stronger America, acting as nothing more than a filter, donated that same money to a number of other conservative organizations, like Wisconsin Right to Life, United Sportsmen of Wisconsin, Safari Club International, and Wisconsin Family Action, which got nearly $900,000. That so-called dark money donated to Wisconsin Family Action accounted for more than 80% of the group's entire budget. And remember, none of it was disclosed, meaning all of that was dark money. That phrase is ridiculous. Look, organizations, uh, 501c3s and 501c4s, have a right and uh, you know legal standing to be able to not disclose the people who give them money. And it, it's just ridiculous that we have to spend all this time and money defending ourselves against something that we shouldn't even have to be talking about. Where we get our money, as long as it's legal, and it is legal, is, is quite frankly no one, el no one else's business. Accepting on behalf of Mike Lowe is Mike Lowe. It's the old story, follow the money, right? Despite what I said earlier about not wanting to be a storyteller or be labeled as that, I hope you'll indulge me as I tell you a quick story. Uh, <laughs> the, the day I found out that I was a Walter Cronkite award winner, I was called into my boss's office and he said, look, the budget's coming up, I gotta know, are you gonna re-sign here in Milwaukee or are you gonna go? And I had given it some thought and I wanted to try and see if I could hit major league pitching. I wanted to try and see if I, got, if I could get back home to Chicago. So I told him, look boss, I, I don't think I'm gonna re-sign. Uh, and he said, well that's a shame because I can't put the memo out today that you're not coming back at the same day that we're putting the memo out about the Walter Cronkite Award. So we waited a couple days and I tried for the next three weeks to get a job in Chicago. Uh, that time came and went and I don't know what the problem was, maybe it was because I'm a short guy who's 40 pounds overweight with a receding hairline, uh, but I couldn't get hired in Chicago. Um, and March 31st came, that was the end of my contract. So the next day, April 1st, I packed up and left Milwaukee. Uh, April 2nd, I went to go see my two brothers who were born and raised in Chicago, but now live in Kansas City. We went there for the Easter weekend. And during that time, uh, one of my brother's friends said, you know, you should go check out, as long as you're here, the Walter Cronkite Memorial in St. Joseph, Missouri. So on the way back, driving back to Chicago, I said, it's only 45 minutes out of the way. What the heck, I'll, I'll check it out. And as you walk in, there's this kiosk of videos, and it, it's all the stuff we know about Walter Cronkite, right? His coverage of the moon landing, Watergate, Vietnam, of course, the JFK assassination, all the things we're familiar with. But as you got kind of deeper into this museum, there was an aspect of Walter Cronkite's career that I hadn't heard before. And it was all about an incident in 1969. President Richard Nixon had given a speech to the nation about the Vietnam War. And immediately after that speech, all the networks came on and criticized it, fact-checked it, analyzed it, did the things that journalists are supposed to do. His henchman, or his vice president, Spiro Agnew, 
the next day went out and made a speech about how this was a terrible thing, that, that the networks had no right to criticize the President of the United States when he's giving a speech intended to rally the country. Uh, and then he kind of openly mused about, well, what if we just took away their broadcast licenses? A lot of the other network anchors and people in, in the news kind of just dismiss that as, as a politician uh, criticizing journalists. Walter Cronkite, however, took that as a threat to freedom of speech, which it was. It was a direct assault on the freedom of the press. And he said, I'm going to do something that no one else will do. And the executives at CBS thought it was ridiculous. He said, I'm going to go to St. Joseph, Missouri, and talk to my hometown at the Chamber of Commerce, and I'm going to answer questions from middle America. Because that's what Spiro Agnew had said, that the, the elites in New York were just talking over the silent majority. So Walter Cronkite went back to his hometown and took two hours of hostile questions from people. And people at CBS were saying, Walter, you can't do this. You're only going to lower yourself to, to a level that, you know, you're, it's, it's only going to hurt your image. It had the reverse effect. Walter Cronkite, I think, was looked at in much greater esteem by the country. 60 Minutes devoted a full hour of a, a broadcast to Walter Cronkite just taking questions from the public. And I think the fact that he had the courage to do that uh, is sorely lacking in today's media. Um, what Walter Cronkite kept coming back to in those answers was the public's right to know and the right of the freedom of the press. And every answer he gave essentially came back to that same point. And I, I left that museum on my way back to Chicago and I was kind of inspired. I didn't know what I was going to do. I just left my job. I thought, well, I'll, it's on to the next adventure. Well, maybe I'll get into advertising or PR or something. But I left that museum kind of inspired by Walter Cronkite to stay in journalism. And you're going to think this is crazy, but I got back that very night and checked my inbox, and I had an email that uh, WGN, the venerable station in Chicago, uh, wanted to interview me. And within a couple of days, I was hired by WGN. So I'm, I no longer work for Fox 6. And I, you're right, okay, <laughs> you can clap for that, sure. But um, I, you know, I don't know if there's a, some kind of cosmic force here that, you know, wasn't the famous benediction, that's the way it is, but maybe it was Walter Cronkite saying, that's the way you should go, stay in journalism. So. It's obviously very humbling to have an award that's associated with just the icon of the industry, Walter Cronkite. I uh, want to, first of all, thank him and his family for um, bestowing his name uh, upon this award, his incorruptible image and his unassailable integrity. I want to thank Marty and the staff at Norman Lear uh, at USC. Where's Veronica? She's done a great job with all this. The wait staff here at the National Press Club. Everybody, this has just been an amazing day. Uh, and I want to thank my brother, who's here. He came all the way from Kansas City. One of my friends, Tom Sufferden, from growing up. And a couple guys I know from Northwestern and a guy I met in Germany. They're both here, but they live here. So they got a free lunch out of the deal. But thanks to everybody. And everybody here has done excellent work. I watched all the entries, and you all deserve to be applauded. Thank you. Nice story, Mike. <laughs> 